Hello, my sweet friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Becky, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week, I share kinda shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. Now, last week, you gals really enjoyed our bird-inspired projects, so we've got four more that we're going to be doing today. First, we're going to use these beautiful printed images and some book pages to create our beautiful bird banner. Next, I'm breaking out the tart tins and the peat pots again for a fresh take on spring. And for our last spring project, we're going to be using an actual spring. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. I love birds, but bluebirds are my favorite. And I have collected these beautiful images here from the Graphics Fairy and put them all onto this printable. And then I found this cute little bird poem as well. And we're going to be cutting out our pieces and then we will be gluing them onto our book pages. I'm using my paper trimmer to cut mine down to size, but you most definitely could use scissors as well. So now that I have cut out all seven of my images, I also pulled out seven pages from my book. Now I'm just going to take a regular craft stick here and apply that to the back of my image and then start putting these down in the middle of my pages. I printed my images out onto cardstock to give them a little more weight, but you could use plain paper as well. Once I had all of my images on my pages, then I went back and trimmed the pages down a little bit just to eliminate a lot of this excess from around the page. Then I took my seam gauge and marked little dots that I'm going to use to punch holes in the top of my paper. And now that I have the holes punched in the pages here, I'm going to be using some inks and I've got my archival in the color coffee and cobalt. And these inks are going to highlight our image and just make them stand out a little bit more from that back of that book page. So with the blue, I'll just be dabbing that on around the image of our birds here. So you can see I've done this side and not this one. And I'm not doing it on there very heavy, just to highlight that image, just to make it stand out a little bit more. And then with the coffee, I'm gonna go over the corners and age paper all around the outside edges here. And you can see the difference between these two. That just adds a little bit of interest to your page. And for the one with a poem on it, I'm just using coffee on the whole image and I won't be putting any blue on this one at all. And you can see the difference here, how that ink just adds a little bit of extra interest to our pages. So I'm just gonna continue inking the rest of my images as I've done with these and then we'll be back to put our banner together. And we're gonna take this beautiful blue ribbon that I purchased from Dollar Tree, and we're gonna be stringing our pieces onto that to form our banner. I'll use a piece of blue painter's tape at the end to make it easier to thread it through the holes. And I want my banner to have the birds actually overlapping the little poem like that. So I'm gonna lay those out really quickly. And now I have them laid out how I like them and I can just start on this end and just begin threading my ribbon through to form our banner. I love this blue. I think it is so pretty. So here is our pretty bird banner so far. And now we just need to put the finishing touches on it. So you know I have to put a shabby tassel at each end and look how pretty that is going to coordinate with our bird photos. How pretty is that? And I've used 100% cotton fabric and this is just a blue check 
an ivory muslin and a pink polka dot and I just love that variety of those colors and patterns and that is just going to look really really pretty on our banner. So I have three strips of the blue check, three strips of the polka dot, and two of the plain ivory and they are a foot long and they are a half inch wide. Now all I have to do is just fold them in half Take another piece of my ivory cotton and that's going to form our little tassel. I'm just going to tie that tightly. And now take that and tie it to this end. So we have that one on that end. Scoop these up in the middle. Use my extra piece of ivory to tie that in the middle tightly. and then tie this on to the other end. And what could be more perfect than birds and shabby tassels? And now we're going to have some fun with our tart tins. And I purchased these off of Amazon and they are just very inexpensive. I also took them outside and opened them up with a rubber mallet just so I would have a larger area to work with. And you can see the difference between the two. I also gave them a quick coat of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in chiffon cream and I only put one coat on there on the front and the back just to give them a little bit of a soft vintage look. For my first tart tin, I'm going to be using this beautiful nest stamp that I purchased from Hobby Lobby and I'll also be using my archival ink in the color coffee and stamping onto cardstock. And you can see just how cute that little image is. Now I'm taking my two inch hole punch and I am going to be punching out my nest. My image is a little too high so I'm going to stamp it again and bring the image a little closer to the bottom of the paper. And I like that better. That's a little more centered. That one was just way too high. So we're going to go with this image. Now that my ink is dry, I'm going to be using this little watercolor set that I picked up from the children's craft department in Walmart. And I like this little color right here. So now I want to take and just go over my little eggs. And that's why I like to use the cardstock because it can stand up to having a little bit of water on it and it's not going to curl up on us. Isn't that cute? So we're going to set this aside to dry and we're going to decorate the inside of our tart tin. This is just cheesecloth that I pick up from Hobby Lobby. This is not 100% cotton so it's not going to snip and rip for us but we can get some good frayed edges there just by pulling these loose threads. So I've pulled out quite a few threads just to give that a nice tattered look. And burlap would also look cute on this as well. So now I'm just going to take my fabric and my glue gun and I'm going to glue that down just in the middle right here. And then I'm also going to tack it in just a little bit on the corners. So I'm just going to do just a dollop of glue in the middle and press in some moss. Tap off the excess because I'm not going to need all of that. And now before I glue that into my tin, I'm going to take my ink again to distress the edges and then just kind of wipe it around on the image itself, just on the outside of the image. And that just really distresses that right up. And now all I have to do is glue that into my tart tin. That is really, really cute. And because I do want to be able to hang this, I'm going to take some jute twine, tie this in a knot down here, and now I'm just going to glue that onto the back. That's not going to hang straight. 
I'm going to add a dot of glue right here to make that hang straight. That's better. It hangs straight now. Isn't that cute? So let's go ahead and do our other one. So for this one, I'm going to be using some drop cloth fabric, and this is just scraps. I like to save all of my scraps. And when you cut and wash your drop cloth, it gives such a nice frayed edge. So I'm just going to cut this end off. Now I'm going to cut this into strips and just glue that in again, just to add some interest to the inside of our tart tin. So we've got that all glued down to the inside, and that's just cute already. Now I'm going to use some Spanish moss in there. Again, we're just going to load up the inside with some glue and press in our moss. I'm going to use scraps from my bird project from last week, and I'm going to use my same hole punch to cut out a circle. And that is already nice and beautiful and aged, and we don't have to do anything to that. We're going to make a little nest to go on this little circle. And we're going to take our jute twine, and we're going to glue down and start there and just circle that around to form our little nest. And you don't need to keep gluing it. You just only need to tack it down just to keep going and going and just build on top of that. So that's that. I just kept swirling it and just adding just a little bit of glue just to tack it down until it made a little nest. And now I'm going to take some of our brown and put just a little bit in the middle right here. I'm going to take some little pearls and glue them in there for our eggs. I like to use tweezers so I don't burn myself. And you just need just a tiny little bit of glue and tap it into your nest. And now we're going to glue that onto that middle of our tart tin. We're almost finished. I'm going to be using this set of alphabet stamps that I purchased from Amazon to stamp the word nest onto one of my scrap pieces here. I'm using my archival ink in the color Bluebird. And now we're just going to cut that strip out. And I'm just going to glue that down right there. How cute is that? And now I'm going to do the same thing with my jute and make a hanger for the back of this one as well. I think those turned out really, really cute. And now we're going to jazzy up our peat pot. And I picked these up at Home Depot. I've already gone and given this one a light coat of our Waverly in the color plaster. And so while that dries, we're going to go ahead and get some of our embellishments ready. So I cut out another smaller bird template similar to the one that I did last week just on some more of my scrap paper that I had left over from my music sheet. Next, you're also going to need a coffee filter. I'm going to cut out this half circle here that I can see in my coffee filter. And then I'm just going to make a cut in that as well. And you can see that it's pleated, and we're just going to exaggerate those pleats by scrunching that up in our hands just so we get those pleats much more defined. So we're going to form a little ruffle. And so now that we have all of this folded, we're just going to go ahead and move on to our next embellishment. Now I'm taking some more of my scrap piece of drop cloth. I'm using the same stamps, but this time I'm not going to hook those together because I want to have the letters spaced out a little bit. And I'm going to be spelling the word chirp. And again, I'll be using my archival ink in the color Bluebird. And I've got the letters spaced out pretty far apart because what we're going to do now is cut these out to form a little banner. So I've cut my little first triangle out, and I'm just going to lay that over the H there just so that my letters are going to be the same size and use that as a template. I'm just going to cut out all of my letters in that same triangle shape. 
And now that I have all of my little triangle banner shapes cut out, I'm just going to be hot gluing them to a piece of twine. So I've glued them onto my twine like that. And now we're going to take our coffee filter ruffle and we're going to glue it onto the inside of the lip of our peat pot. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to get it started. And you don't need to glue the whole thing down. You just need to tack it down in places around the pot. So I have my ruffle on there now and I did glue the paper to itself so it would stay together. And then I just kind of pressed it a little bit with my hand just to fan it out a little bit. And I'm going to take this package filler and stuff my pot. Take some plastic eggs and pop those in there. I'm going to use some of my wrapped wire. I'm going to glue that onto my bird so I can tuck my bird into my pot as well. Let's get him tucked in there. That is so cute. And now I'm going to take two little bamboo skewers and pop those in there. And we're going to put our banner over our little bird. So I'm going to tie this end here. Tie this end over here. And now I'm going to just glue some lace right along this edge here just to give that some interest. And you only need to tack it in a couple of places because it'll stay in place pretty well for you. Then I'm going to add just a touch of glue at the bottom so our banner won't keep sliding down. That is so cute! Well, let's go ahead and move on to our last project. Many times when you buy some vintage springs, it will have this large circular area on both ends, but since this one does not, I'm going to have to create something in order for my nest to stand on. So I'm taking a piece of foam board and I'm tracing this old grapevine wreath that I took apart from another project that I had done. So I've got the outside and the inside, and I'm actually going to cut between the two. And it doesn't have to be perfect because all of this is going to be covered up. And I'm going to take this part here and push that into my foam board just to kind of straighten it out a little bit. And I'm going to put some glue up underneath here to glue this down to my spring. And now I'm going to cut strips of my cheesecloth just to kind of drape over there and cover all of that up. So I have my four strips and they're not going to be very long. They're just going to lay over there just a little bit. And I'm going to pull out some of these threads and just fray the edges a little bit just like we did when we made our little tart tins. So now I've got my strips on here and I just laid them in a crisscross pattern and I've placed my grapevine wreath on there. Now I'm going to put some Spanish moss there in the middle and I've clipped off a bunch of pieces from one of these garlands from Hobby Lobby and I just like using them. They're so versatile in your crafting. So I'm just going to place those just around the edges here and that's just going to fill in our little nest. So let's add in more of our little eggs. And then I've got some lavender and also some little baby's breath and I picked these up at Walmart. So I'm just going to cut these apart and tuck some of these in there as well. There we go. Look how cute that is. Now all I need to do is get everything staged up and show you how cute all of our projects turned out.
you so much for visiting my channel today. I am truly glad that you're here. Please remember to subscribe for more kind of shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. And until next week, my sweet friends, be blessed. Thank you.